in our studio so that we can have a conversation as to what Manipur needs, what has not been done, what should have been done, what can be done. And I'm very happy to say that on our request, a very special guest has flown from Manipur to Delhi to be with us on News 9 Live in this studio. I'm talking about Hemo Chandra Singh, the former Speaker of Manipur Assembly, five times MLA, and someone who understands the state. Thank you so much, Mr. Singh, for joining me. Why has Manipur in a state today? Well, uh, Kartike, as you, as you have followed very, very conscientiously, I am truly indebted to News 9, as you said. You, you stand even today deeply committed to our issues. Manipur is still on the boil, to my mind. And things are still not normal at all. It may look a bit like a lull in the storm because of the because of the elections. Maybe you know, I think to my mind, uh, the Lok Sabha elections, although uh, it has come about in the country as a general election, but I think the general population per se is not actually ready for an, 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 an election. We are in the throes of a crisis, and we are still grappling with it. Grappling with it, you know with a lot of difficulties and I think probably I would have been happy if even the election, this is a personal, uh, I mean reflection, this is a personal thought that even probably for the, in the context of Manipur, even the elections are secondary, elections were secondary to my mind, but maybe yes, it was not possible, the election commission also I think announced elections and it is going to be held in the first phase itself. So that itself is also uh, one of those issues, but uh, to my mind, the perplex, perplexing issues of Manipur, which has uh, a long genesis of which you know, you, you, you probably are as conversant as me on these issues. And I think uh, these issues remain to my mind. You know, when we talk about Manipur, uh, it's about a lot of things. It's about the fencing which is happening. It's about the poppy cultivation. Uh, it's about illegal uh, uh, arms really? which are in circulation. It's also about the fact that uh, there is drug money. But there's also one thing. Uh, there has been a churn in the Maiti society. Why has that churn happened? Oh yes, Kartike, in fact, uh, this had to happen anyway. This had to happen anyway. I'll tell you. See, the Maiti civilization, I, I don't even want to use the word Maiti actually. This was not even the terminology which we were used to because we were, we were you know, we were, uh, we were a product of a very, uh, you know, heterogeneous, you know, very harmonious, very you know liberal you know uh, civilization where everybody lived together, but yes, the Maiti civilization, as you said, the Manipuri civilization is many millennia old, two thousand plus years old, and why the Maitis were sidelined? You know, the Maitis came about to be you know totally you know uh, I think uh, pushed to the wall. It has not come about in a day. It has taken several years, and probably I think the fault lies with all of us including myself. I mean, with all the uh, political processes, whatever has been happening over the, over the, over the so many decades. And I think if, um, today, I think this had to happen anyway. It had become a tinderbox. It had become a tinderbox. And these issues, I think the Maitai, I think I should say the Maitai resurgence, the Maitai psyche was so hurt. You know, you know the fact that I, this, I don't, uh, to, this is not to be, you know, emphasized further that we live in a place which is only, probably only not even 10% anymore. But when you say that it's not even 10% anymore, uh, the sort of division which has taken place on ground between the cookies and the maitis, it's geographical. I, I mean to say there is a, there is a divide. Uh, the firing takes place. There's a line of control. How do you deal with that? This is very sad. This is very sad. This is, I think, I think, I think, uh, partly circumstantial, partly man-made, partly whatever. Uh, whatever has happened, I'm not, see, I, I don't want to go into, it's almost a year, Kartike, and you followed it very intensely, and I have been on, I think, your show, I think, in you know, other shows, we have discussed this. Let us not talk about the hen and the egg now. Let us not talk about anda pehle tha ya murgi pehle thi. Let us look for solutions now. Let us look, look beyond now. I think what is the reality as of today is that we are now, you know, we are talking about war zones, you know, we are talking about buffer zones. You cannot go beyond this. You cannot come uh, into this, that kind of a situation. So this, unfortunately, 
for various reasons. It could be, we'll come into that if you give mm -hmm. me time on that. Sure, sure. See, there are, there are, there are border, uh, border issues, there are immigration issues, there are, you know, uh, cross-border, uh, you know, uh, issues, there's the drug issue. So many issues are intertwined, there's so many layers. Layers and layers have all got mixed up. And it has become a very, very, you can say, dangerous concoction. Correct. Over the years, which probably, unfortunately, has not been rectified. It was not addressed on time. It was not, uh, uh, you know, probably given uh, the, I think... Uh, can I ask you a question bluntly? Yes, please. Hmm. How, how much Birin Singh is responsible for this? I think, uh, to my mind, uh, he's, uh, he should uh, uh, be responsible. I think he should, he's equally responsible. He's the chief minister. I mean, I mean in the sense, uh, to a certain degree, I think the initial, I think uh, uh, the, uh, you can say, the initial reaction to which he candidly also, I think if you remember in the early part. He when I use the word responsible, I mean inability to manage. I will not say that because this, I'm not trying to defend him here, like, like, but to a certain degree, see, being, the, being the chief minister of a state, one cannot, one has to take the responsibility, one has to take the onus for that. But this, this kind of a conflagration, this kind of a crisis, which is unprecedented, probably today, uh, you know, Mr. Biren may be a beleaguered chief minister. He's the devil today. He has been a devil. And he has, we have all the right to be, uh, you know, angry with him. We have all the right to be angry with the establishment. But the, the, the crisis which, is, uh, which erupted in Manipur was beyond... Uh, you know, uh, beyond imagination, beyond proportions, which probably would have, would have been humanly impossible, human, humanly difficult for probably any chief minister to handle. There are two sides of the stories. There are two st competing stories. But the one story is that the cookies feel that, you know, they were hunted out. And the other side of the story is that the Maitis feel that illegal immigration is turning the Maiti community into a minority. Your response. See, Kartike, I don't want you to now into entrap me because you, you guys are very smart. Sometimes, you know, you, you probably uh, trap us into this again, Maite cookie conflict. I don't want to, I'm the last, last one person to wanting to do that now. At least, you know, that is the case. But in my case, please, I have taken this stand. I still stand by, the, uh, stand by my position that it is not the cookies who have been hounded. In fact, it is the Maite who have been hounded out. Who started the whole uh, conflict? I mean, since your question is a direct question, and it's a pretty blunt one also, who started the whole, uh, I mean, uh, 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 this thing, uh, 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 violence? Uh, did you, do you recollect the Churachanpur, that, uh, the cry, that uh, peace rally? So you're saying Kuki started it? Yes, of course, but it is on record. Uh, the Maitis never started it. In fact, Kalashnikov holding, automatic wielding, uh, I mean, people were in the peace rally. Have you ever seen? Have you ever seen in this democratic, you know, in the setup or elsewhere in the country where a civil, civil, uh, you know, protest is manned by people holding automatic rifles? And then the belligerents, you know, you, I'll say the word belligerents, look at the high handedness of these people. And, and these two, now it is modern, I think, clear that these were all illegal immigrants. Probably they were foreigners who were, uh, uh, who had commandeered, who had commandeered this, uh, this uh, peace rally, and then they go and burn down uh, Maitai villages. And Kartika, you know it better than me, as good, or as good as me, that Churachanpur were Purkose for generations. Maitai habitations were there. They were raised to the ground. So who, see, let us not again, you know, then it will, I think the debate, the, the, the level of debate will go down if I say that it was them, it was us. No, but it was not. Let's be, be, be very clear. It is not. And by the way, we were hounded out. We were hounded so out. So should the Sioux agreement be done away with? Absolutely. This has been our demand for uh, how many years? So how can the Sioux agreement go on a, you know, uh, on, a, <laughs> on a perpetual elastic, uh, I think, uh, uh, never-ending uh, kind of tenure. And if the Sioux agreement is done away with, then there is also a demand that the recovery should happen in Toto in the valley areas. Arms were looted. And recovery has not happened. See, I think it's complicated. Yes, definitely. Recovery should happen. I think I'm completely against weaponization of a society. When a civil society is weaponized, 
whether it is the cookies or, or it is the maitais, there is no good fallout on that, definitely. There is no place in civil society or in democracy for a civil society to be weaponized. Unfortunately, as you know, the conditions in, the, in Manipur or even in the Northeast, if you, you, you've been a, an avid follower of issues in the Northeast, the Northeast is, is a place which is, which is geopolitically, you know, in the strategic point of view, in the whole uh, geopolitical sense, is a very sensitive area, much more sensitive than probably the northern, uh, you know, Kashmir sector. To my mind, there's always a geopolitical angle to it also, and it's the corridor to, East, to, to, to Asia, to Southeast Asia. So therefore, this is slightly more complicated than what meets the normal eye, what meets the normal eye. So anyway, just the fact that this is all messed up with all these weapons flowing freely, but it has to be also seen in the context of the reality where the two communities have become so polarized that they feel the need to you know, weaponize themselves to defend themselves. Isn't that a failure of the state government then? Partly, yes, partly no. Because, uh, as I said, see, when uh, you, you talked about, you, uh, we have to go back into a little bit of, uh, you know, history of okay. our own country. When, okay. when the country went through partition, when India was formed, you know, when uh, it was partitioned, we, you, uh, we were not born, you were not born, I was not born, but we, we know, know it uh, for the fact that there were huge, you know, ethnic uh, imbalances. There, were, there was you know, a lot of violence. And then, you know, the country was, I think, uh, uh, totally uh, broken into parts. And in Bangladesh came about, East Pakistan and all that. But see, it is, in a way, to my mind, in my limited knowledge, in my limited experience, I feel that it is no less... Uh, a smaller, you know, smaller version of that kind of a uh, division, that kind of a division which has taken place in Manipur, for instance. So it is very difficult. You know, it is. It will not be very easy to, you know, just brush it aside as something, you know, which has come about because of, uh, you know, weaponization, because of. Tell me one thing. As a lawmaker, five-term MLA, someone who has been a minister, someone who has been the speaker of the assembly. This new development of civil society activists calling the shots in the entire state, running over the constitutional process. How do you look at it? On one hand, you have Arambai Tengol, and the other hand, you have the ITLF, and all of them, you know, and then you have the Mera Paibis, you know, all of them have dictates against the government. They mobilize the public opinion, they mobilize people, and it renders the constitutional machinery. I would say weak in front of them. How has this development happened? Why have they become so strong? See, uh, you have to, uh, I think, uh, you cannot uh, give a very simplistic one sentence, you know, uh, probably answer to this. This is far more complicated than what it looks like. And probably, so this is the reason I requested exactly, you to fly the, from Manipur to yeah, come that's here the reason and why answer these I'm questions. So happy, I'm so happy you're the first person who has uh, very, very boldly at least, you know, uh, confronted with, with this issue, and I'm going to be very frank with it. I've, I've been known for frankness. I've been known, uh, known for my whatever, I mean, uh, views which I've expressed in my public life, to be very frank. Uh, and to my mind, I think I agree with you. I think this, the civil administration, the, the rule of law, the constitutional, I think, uh, I think, ascendancy, the constitutional propriety has to eventually take over. But that is not possible. Because today, you're talking about a complete, uh, you know, uh, I think polarization, I should say. I don't know, uh, for the final better word, you would know a better word. It is, we are totally divided vertically. And when this division takes place, then it, the, this constitution, you know, the law, you know, gov governance doesn't, you know, uh, take uh, precedence. Then it is all about existence. It is almost becoming existential issues. Now today the Maitais are feeling that there is no, uh, we are going to be uh, probably, you know, shunted out. We are going to become a minority in some, some, uh, some years. Look at the illegal... Is Maitai identity integral to Manipuri identity? Absolutely. The Central Ma to it? Absolutely. The Maitai identity has been integral and sh it should be the integral part for, money, for the idea of Manipur to survive. In fact, it is the Maitai identity which has survived... I think uh, the whole ethos of the Manipur Is Maitri identity under threat from illegal immigration? Definitely. Definitely. Look at Tripura. Look at l history. Look at, let us again go back into history. Today we are threatened. We are, we have this in immense, you know, threat which has come about. And thanks to, I, 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 in fact, I thank 
in a way. Although it is very tragic, but thanks to this conflict, that at least we have woken up. We have woken up. You know, we are Vaishnav people. We are very peaceful people. You know the Radha Krishna dance. We, you know the culture. You know, we are. We have not been a very militant people in terms of in terms of no in terms of uh, you know our uh, you can reaction to people. But why have why has the mighty reacted in the way we have reacted? Okay, have I made my? Yes, you have reacted. Other community has reacted. No, have I made my point? No, you have made your point clear. The question was that. Is Maiti identity integral to the idea of Manipur? You said yeah, yes, definitely. it is integral. You said that's the center. It's the it's the center of the gravity. Uh, a lawmaker of five terms. Why did you leave Congress Party at oh, this well, juncture? <laughs> I thought maybe Kartika, you will not probably ask me this question, but nevertheless, uh, I was more probably keen to talk about. Uh, Manipur at no, this no, I'll come time. back to Manipur. We uh, have definitely. time on our hands. Oh, yes, then if we have time on our hands, but yes, I definitely. want to know why did you leave? Your former uh, assembly speaker. Well, uh, uh, our association with the Congress Party is very long, particularly, in fact, it goes back two generations. In fact, my father was also in the Congress, and uh, you could say well over 50 years plus we've been with the Congress Party. And I started as a very young legislator at the, at the age of 26, and the tragic circumstances my father. Passed away in a plane crash, and that's too. That's another story. But that's almost 30 plus years, 32 years. Yes, Kartike, it has. Uh, I have. Uh, if you, I don't know if you have followed my uh, the news uh, with of my resignation three days back. Uh, I had done it with a very heavy heart. But yes, on a personal note, my elastic limit had also snapped. I mean, uh, and I had to eventually take a decision to leave the party, partly because it is related both with Manipur as well as. The general decline and the disillusionment and a complete lack of vision and a complete lack of purpose which the Congress Party has lost uh, to my mind. It has. It is a party of no relevance to my okay. mind. Are you but yes, coming I, back to... Are you saying Congress Party used to be a force in Northeast? Are you saying that oh, yes. they are not a force in Northeast? Not at all. In fact, it has no presence at all now in the Northeast. Where is the presence? In Manipur, I can give you the example. Why did Congress Party lose out Manipur? It had to lose. There was Why? no way because the way the Congress Party was conducting itself, it was on a self-destructive mode as it is. In fact, it's a, a lot of a lot of people in my a lot of colleagues uh, who had earlier left the Congress told me, Mr. Hemuchandra, why have you stayed so far? Why have you stayed? In fact, I stayed on for more than more than what I wanted to, and this has been going on in my mind. But eventually, you know, old ties are hard to break, and you know, uh, it's difficult. Kartika, I hope you'll understand. Is you this know. something to do with Rahul Gandhi? No, no, no. Rahul Gandhi is one of the factors, one of the major right. factors, I should say. See, I think uh, I'll be more specific. Can I be specific? Yes, you can. To Manipur? Yes. See, Rahul Gandhi had this, you know, this is a, he's had his Bharat Jodo Yatra, whatever there. The traction, there was a, to my mind, I think there was a traction in the first, in the first uh, Yatra. And uh, I remember, you know, uh, him walking 25 kilometers a day, slugging, slugging it out in a, in a thin t-shirt in the bitter winter in North India. And you know, probably to a certain extent, uh, there was a chord which was struck in the minds of the people that Rahul Gandhi is trying to reinvent himself. You know, he's trying to probably change his ways of thinking and you know, approach to you know, politics. That was the thinking. But uh, later on, when uh, he came for his second avatar, for the Bharat Jodo Yatra, which probably concluded only about 10 days back in Mumbai. It was a 63 days, uh, I mean, yatra, which you will remember, uh, Kartike, for some reason, at least not personally agreeable to me, started from Manipur. And Manipur was in the throes of a crisis where displaced people were still suffering. They were living in pitiable conditions in relief camps. So and that was a time when the Congress party felt that they will start uh, their Bharat Jodo Yatra from, from Manipur. It was a totally, totally political, I mean, I think, political, I think, uh, step okay. to which I felt as an insider then. I'm not, okay. I'm not in the Congress anymore. I don't have that baggage anymore. Okay. I said, no, Manipur, Manipur is not ready for pol politicalization. Politics should be the least thing in Manipur okay. to do. And Lok Sabha, Lok Sabha ko dekkar aap jo ye kar rahe ye mat kijiye. Instead, empathize with our people and please let me allow me to add one 30 seconds to okay. it the whole entire congress leadership flew down in a chartered plane as if it was a big tamasha 
Karnataka Chief Minister, Malikarjun Kharge, you know, what have you. And they all came down as if it was a whole Zamburi. And Rahul Gandhi, who had, who had uh, you know, who, had, who was braving the cold okay. and walking uh, for a distance, was in an air-conditioned Volvo. Air-conditioned Volvo, please remember. It was a picnic. It was a picnic. It was at best a uh, you know, roadshow which had no meaning for the, for the pain which we were suffering from Manipur. And that was... Kartike, that was the last straw on last straw on the camel's back. I said, no, 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 no. This party doesn't have, this leader doesn't have this vision. This leader is all seconds. about... Okay. 30 seconds, you made your point. Okay. 30 seconds, uh, you made your point. Can normalcy return to Manipur? Well, why not? We, we have to think like that. Kartike, if Can we... cookies and metis live together peacefully, what? administratively, geographically, See, not in ghettos? See, Kartike, I am still, I am a positive person and if that, that ray of hope and if that positivity is lost and you are not living, we have to, we have to eventually live There is no other way. There is no other way. Absolutely. This is what I wanted to hear from no you. No other way. This is what I wanted to hear from you. There is no other way. People have to live together. The sovereignty of the nation, its rule yes. is paramount. Assembly is paramount. And how much you hate the lawmakers, you need them because you live in a democracy. India is not a dictatorship. Thank you so much, Mr. Singh, for joining me on the show.